So now it's like a race to the bottom of like, who can be the stupidest person? I feel like next week, we're going to just have people literally going, oh, 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 and then people are like, dude, that is so good. I'm, he's just like me for real. Let him cook. Let him cook. There's a lot to watch today. Let's get started with Eldon. I don't know if you guys can see what's going on. I've been getting canceled lately. You're going to pull the blanket off her. Pour it on her. And you're going to grab the bag. Smack, smack, smack. The internet is such a negative place, such a negative space. I'm going to go pee in the face, okay? okay. This thing, it, 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 it's just horrible. I will literally have people do theirs for thousands of dollars. And like, I've been like torturing them, you know, and hurting themselves. And it just feels so good. Like, you get high from it. Dude, Aiden Ross literally behaving like the kid that tortured animals at this point but instead because he's rich enough he's like actually getting humans to torture other humans which makes it even more fucked up you know what i mean i'm sure you've noticed the internet's been kind of weird lately here's why you gotta break up with your girlfriend if you're not making six figures a year this new breed of females are literally equivalent to blood-sucking vampires you never apologize to a woman i don't give a if she caught you cheating in the bed in in her in bed with another chick Bitch, it's your fault i can't scroll my timeline longer than 10 seconds without seeing some finance bro drooling into a mic about how women are evil for not wanting to spend their lives cooking and birthing children Okay, well, they don't cook the children, but annoying and insecure dudes complaining about the individual choices adults make in their own personal lives is, of course, hardly a new concept. The ultra online red pilled alpha male based Pepe Giga Chad weirdo manosphere has always existed to some extent, but has only seen more of a renaissance over the past year or so. When their lord and savior first made the news in April 2022 for a hand, let me check here. Oh, yeah, a sex trafficking investigation, his provocative what? comments surrounding women no! and masculinity catapulted Andrew Tate into the cultural zeitgeist becoming inarguably one of the most famous people in the world by that summer. Suddenly everyone with internet access went from having no idea this guy existed to seeing him- Dude, misogyny was such a fucking rocket ship for this dude that everybody started literally just copying his bit. Like he's not the first to do it, but he was like pretty much the best to do it. Let's be fucking real. And what I mean by that is just like take misogyny and like get on that rocket ship and be the face of that rocket ship all the way to the fucking top. And like since then, it's like a power vacuum has happened. It's like executing Saddam Hussein and then leaving Iraq to like multiple different military factions that you have armed. Okay. You cut off the head of the leadership and then all of a sudden... There's like, who's, who's going to be the ISIS of misogyny? You know what I mean? Who's going to do that? Because he was the Saddam Hussein of misogyny. And now, now that he's been like, you know, dealt with, I guess, with, by the Romanian prison system, kind of. Now it's like, who's going to be the fucking ISIS? Like, and everyone is going for this power vacuum leadership role. Everyone with a fucking Sure mic or an SM7B and, and like, you know, a fake podcast, bisexual lighting, and like the worst beard haircut combo I've ever seen is out here rocking the tightest button up shirts going, oh my God, women are fucking whores. They're bitches. They don't want to fuck you. They should want to fuck you. Why don't they? Okay. That's like, that's where we're at now. This is the entirety of the internet. Aren't you currently using a sure mic? Fuck yeah, bitch. I'm the fucking guy. I'm the guy, okay? I am the fucking, I am the ISIS of misogyny. That's what I'm saying. These guys step the fuck back. His chin deprived face every waking day. While many of his beliefs remain heavily contested and flat out wrong to this day, one universal truth that cannot be argued is that these two- It's just like funny because the audience, sorry, I, I, I'm cutting this off again, but it's funny because the audience is so fucking stupid and Andrew Tate basically revealed that like Jordan Peterson was doing too much like intellectual mumbo jumbo. Like he wanted to, he wanted to come across as like smart too hard. And basically like Andrew Tate revealed that like, no, you just have to be like really dumb. Like you have to dumb it down. Doesn't even matter. You could be smarter than it. You have to just like dumb it down. So now it's like a race to the fucking bottom of like, who can be the stupidest person? Like, I feel like next week we're gonna just have people literally going, bitches, war. And then people are like, dude, that is so good. 
I'm he's just like me for real. Let him cook. Let him cook. He's saying ooga booga so bad, dude. That's fucking sick, dude. This is how women make me feel. Okay. Two men started a revolution amongst angsty young boys with a severe that, that lack was great. of direction I that made in me their feel lives. Good. Teens who are in desperate need of self-validation and a good reason to be angry with the less than desirable situations they found themselves in have looked for solace within this guy. Everyone searches for meaning, and Andrew Tate has generously shared his real-world experiences in an effort to elevate the human spirit. If one more dumbass says my mic is clipping, I'm going to literally yell the entire time. I know it's clipping. When it peaks, it clips, okay? Suck my dick, okay? I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you're like open back uh, $1,547 studio headphones are making you hurt your ears when you're watching. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's clipping. It's clipping. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Shut up spirit for the right price of course and if by elevating the human spirit you mean violent misogyny regardless he's offered a weird a twisted sense of hope for vulnerable audiences to latch onto, and an ideology for irresponsible creators to mindlessly regurgitate when sneeko isn't getting ratioed into oblivion by anyone with a twitter account or getting cuckolded by the woman he loves he can be found on a twitch knockoff site parroting andrew tate talking points or just flat out dancing to the edits of hitler no idea oh another this <laughs> this hitler moment reminded me another show that i'm like kind of kind of medium on i wouldn't like go out of my way to be like this show is going to be a fucking banger even though it has woody harrelson and i love woody harrelson national hero icon uh is the hbo show the plumbers uh, the true story behind watergate um the reason why I, the, the Hitler moment reminded me is because, you know, one of the two dudes is like an out and about Nazi. Um, ain't Woody an anti-waxer? I don't give a fuck. Plumbers is decent, not insanely good. Yes. It, it, the first episode was all right. Let me tell you something. The reason why I say it's all right, it's decent, is because that show is extremely my shit. I love Woody Harrelson. I love the other guy too from what is it leftovers or whatever. Uh, like I love, I love both of those things. And more importantly than that, I love a humorous concept, like a humorous look on real world events that surround like an important moment in politics. So Justin Thoreau, is that Justin Thoreau? He's Louis Thoreau's cousin. Anyway, whatever. Shut the fuck up. Who cares? Yeah, he's fine. He's very handsome. I like him. He's, like, fun to look at. Um, pleasant to look at. Sorry. So, I... I think... He, like, I should love that show. You know what I mean? I should fucking absolutely love that show. And the fact that I don't love that show means that, like... The fact that I'm not, like, immediately, like... I, I, like, I went into the, to the show with really high expectations, feeling really great about it. And I left the first episode thinking, eh, it's all right. But it'll be good. Did you ever watch this, Stalin? Yeah, it's incredible. I love Armando Iannucci. Uh, everything he makes, with the exception of that one HBO show with Dr. House uh, as the lead, uh, is, has been great. Armando Iannucci only delivers bangers, especially when it, especially as it pertains to politics. Okay, let's get back to Aiden Ross. Idea what happened there? But it's hard to deny Tate has left a lasting impact on the very youth he financially capitalizes on, creating a whole army of bots who will linger onto every word that spills out of his mouth, change their physical appearances to match his, and even go so far as to sniff the very musk off his chair. Literally. And, 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 and it took me a while to understand that, and, and, and you know it did. And I, I just want to say- Today- Oh my god, dude. How is this person not fucking, like, laughed out of every room? This is what happens when you're- when you're- this is what happens when society is fucking stupid, okay? That's just how it is. There's nothing you can do. In the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. That's it.
That's it. That's what's going on. The entire audience is, wants to sniff Andrew Tate's asshole. So they, they prop up Aiden as the guy who was lucky enough to get that opportunity. Shock. Shocking. Sad. State of affairs. I'd like to focus on one of Andrew Tate's most loyal soldiers, a man who has found deep meaning in his teachings and vowed to leave his- You learned that phrase last week and you love it now? No, I used to say it all the fucking time way back in the day. It's just like I've been saying it more frequently because I think it's like a great, it's a great take. Don't impact on the next generation in a similar way when he can actually pronounce words correctly. Far right authorization on you on- Ultra does it ultra ultra nullitit. Oh my god, ultra and a lattice. Benito Mazzuli. What is an example of a fastest? <laughs> Benito yeah! Mazzuli. Join me on my descent down the rabbit hole of a streaming icon who's recently found himself just as radicalized by the top G as any other impressionable kid out there. While we explore what really happened to Aiden Ross. I just woke up to some crazy catastrophical catastrophic catastrophic. Cat cannabis, cannabis, just abominable news about Andrew Tate. Interesting thing, they just got raided and arrested in uh, Romania. Um, I don't know what to believe. I don't, I don't, I don't know what's going on. I talked to Tristan and Andrew Chat. They're home, bro. They're home, and I, it just feels amazing. They call me Little G. Little G. You need to be alive in my life because you came for a reason, and you're here to inspire me for ten, at least tens of years. I'm gonna have to change your diapers. But before we get too deep here, I do wanna give a huge thanks to our sponsor, Aura. If you've ever Googled yourself and were shocked to find your personal information exposed. But chat, I wanna start to get protection of our data. But chat, I wanna start to get more girls on my stream, probably next month type shit. I'll definitely be out there around the time we drop in that song. Okay, cool. Cool. You talking about. So, what happened? The Big Bang? No, I know the Big Bang Theory. What is it? It's where, um, I really don't know. Um, do you believe in soul, soul colorism? So the average salary is what, like $100,000? What? Aiden David Ross was born on October 11th, 2000 in Boca Raton, Florida. Raised in a Jewish household by two parents alongside his older sister, Naomi. Moving several times from Florida to New York to California, back to New York, then back to California again, thanks in part to his parents divorcing, remarrying other people, then finally remarrying each other again. Right from the start, Wait, what the nothing fuck? about Aiden's life was predictable or stagnant. Opening up on a podcast about it. Okay, never mind. That's like... That what? I've never heard that happen before. Is that normal? Yeah, he's a Boca Zoomer. That that actually like that identifies like a big part of the problem. Like, yeah, he's just you know, Boca Raton Zoomer dude. Come on, dog. That's like you can't be normal at that point. Like that's 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 a community specifically for like all the people from New York that are retiring. You know, it's a very wealthy neighborhood. My grandparents divorced and got back together 30 years later, but not remarried. Parent, my parents remarried each other twice, finally got divorced the last time when I was a kid. That's crazy. I've known lots of people who got married young, split for years, and ended up back later together in life. Wait, really? What the fuck? Bro, I had no idea it was like that. That's pretty cool. We all have our unique upbringings. I mean, dude, it's kind of sick. Like, that's a cool story. Uh, but yeah, it doesn't matter because he grew up in Boca Raton. So, you know, you can't, you can't unfuck that. You know what I mean? Like, it's over. An instance where he was stabbed in his sleep by a mentally unwell relative at the age of 12. When I was like 12 years old, I got stabbed by a knife. So, in my sleep, by a, by a, yeah, by a, by a family relative who was like, like mentally like unstable. It's, I just gasped like three times in a row. Having to be rushed to the hospital in the dead of night to get nine stitches made him numb to traumatic events as he grew older, according to him. I, when that happened to me, I went through it for like a week. I don't know what it was. I became numb and kind of like emotionless to traumatic shit. It's crazy. I could just put it like behind me. Like, you know, picture like you're jumping over like a hurdle. It's mm -hmm. just like a hurdle. I'll just jump over that motherfucker. Like, I'm just really not... I'm not really letting that shit get to me. Throughout the chaos, Aiden took an affinity to gaming as a kid. Anyone around Aiden's age, including myself, can attest to the fact that titles like Halo, Call of Duty, and GTA really helped shape a lot of childhoods at the time. It was like 2000 and 
in 2008. Black Ops 2, NBA 2K series, GTA 5, you know, that's a yeah. lot of type of games. But Aiden oh, wouldn't take his America. hobby gaming public until his senior year of high school, when he first created a Twitch account. Tired of waiting tables, Aiden showed serious determination to make streaming his full-time job, with some of his earliest streams being over 10 hours long. Moving to LA with his sister over the summer of 2019, Aiden streamed consistently Angel? enough that he quickly garnered a small but intimate community and started raking in pretty decent money. His ambition at the time was actually pretty inspiring. After all, it's always good to stay driven and set goals for yourself, but I don't even think Aiden was prepared for just how quickly those goals would be met. NBA 2K was Aiden's first gateway into mainstream recognition. Not just well, it was Bronny because he he like linked up with LeBron's son and he became besties with him. And then, yeah, that's like the biggest LeBron L. Honestly, that's probably the only one in a career filled with like incredible shit. Um, he he basically led to like Aiden Ross's popularity by. I don't know, not sheltering his son a little bit better from outside influences like Aiden Ross. <laughs> I'm just joking, but you know, LeBron can do no wrong. Let's be fucking real. I love him. Uh, if I ever saw him in the real world, I would probably perish, but because it was one of the primary games yeah. he streamed, but because the people he met playing it proves to be pretty instrumental in Aiden's early career. For example, maybe you've heard of this guy, LeBron James. Yeah, well, Aiden became pretty good friends with his son, Bronny, by playing 2K. Actually getting the chance to meet LeBron himself on stream at the beginning of 2020 in a particularly viral moment. What's good, bro? It's LeBron. It's LeBron. He said, is this LeBron? <laughs> Yo, gigantic fan. I love you. Nah, it's all respect, man. I appreciate it, man. And look. It. Showing love and respect to me and my son. Nice meeting you, man. And nice meeting you. How's it going, all right? Yeah, all right, bro. Because LeBron is LeBron, this interaction gave Aiden his first taste of media buzz. Putting his name in front of more people ended up doubling his audience as he began streaming in front of thousands of more eyes. It's like, you wish that was you 100%. That's the only thing I, I would ever be jealous of. Like... I am jealous of nothing, okay? I'm very happy in my life. I'm very confident. Uh, I think I am a very fortunate person. But yes, it would be so sick to meet LeBron. I mean, come on. You're a man being able to admit you're jealous? Oh, yeah, dude. Are you kidding me? Oh, my God. It would be so sick. I would cry. I would probably have tears. I would... I would have tears. It's LeBron. Are you kidding me? He's the GOAT. He's literally the fucking GOAT. Anyway, let's continue. Of course, it was nothing compared to the behemoth his audience would become shortly after, but blowing up to that extent would call for a fresh form of content, something that could captivate a more generic audience outside of his insular community of gamers. Take you to the college and you go watch me fight some lines or something, you know what I'm saying? Something's like, something's like, something's like. What the f Dating shows have been a long time staple in American media and will most likely continue not even a top five player dude top one at playing with your mother's heart how d take 30 minutes off dude i'm done i'm done i'm done this this the disrespect of this fucking goat does not deserve dude that is so insane that is so delusional dude literally you know what goat means greatest of all time okay not greatest of all today of all time okay continue to garner mass attention by taking on different forms. Aiden must have understood what bringing women on stream could have done for his brand. So he began hosting live e-dates through Discord where crusty boys could compete for a date with whichever woman was unlucky enough to be featured that day. This naturally resulted in some incredible non-stream moments that I can only describe by showing you. Dude, let me see that you have game, bro. Come on, let me see you got game. Oh God, oh my God. <laughs> what the f is this? Yeah, this show is where Riz goes to die. But it made him an even more talked about figure among the LA crowd. Being invited to do a hot tub stream with Corinna Kampf that got him to trend on Twitter around the time he was seen partying with the likes of FaZe Clan and somehow even Cactus Jack. After an incredibly successful streak in 2020, Aiden was riding high on the prospect of what the future could hold for the new upcoming year. 
both of those motherfuckers in that photo need to check him, okay? Both both Brother Banks and also Big Mike. Everybody that says social climber literally doesn't understand that, like, this is... Like, what is he supposed to do? Like, of course, uh, he... First of all, it's a mutually beneficial relationship in that regard because he was already... They saw something in him that was uniquely creative. And at the time when, like, FaZe was helping him out, Brother Banks was helping him out, he was already popping off. And secondly... That's how this industry is. That's how most industries are. Like, that's how you become a big creator. Okay? What do you mean? There are two ways to do this. I talk about it all the time. Either through positive relationships that you develop with content creators that are larger than you and around the same size or smaller than you. Or by being like a fucking clown ass who's like constantly antagonistic to every single person. And the second one sucks. The second part is what... A lot of people try and do and fail after a long time. You can say, okay, capitalist, but like, like what? This is what I don't get. You know what I saw? I saw a fucking clip. Uh, I, I saw a tweet. I think it was like a YRG uh, updates account or something. You know what I mean? It was like a rage updates account. Posted uh, a rage quote saying like, I'm not going anywhere else. I'm not going to any other platform unless they pay me. Right? Like, he responded to a viewer or something saying uh, he might have deleted it at this point. But that's basically what he said, right? And I looked at the comments and, and someone was like, dude, these guys don't care about you. They would sell you. Uh, it, it, they would sell you for the bag or whatever the fuck, right? Like, they would sell you uh, down the line for the bag or whatever. And, and no, his audience was, like, pretty receptive and pretty understanding. He was like, why would he... Why wouldn't he make money doing this? Like, why would he sell himself short? Which is really interesting to think about because, like, that guy is not thinking about it from, like, a labor perspective at all, right? That guy is not thinking about it from a labor perspective at all. He's just, he just likes your rage, and he's making that assessment on his own, which is smart. He's right. It's so fundamentally flawed that people just think that, like, uh, you know, knowing your worth or recognizing that the value that you offer and, and, you know, having at least like some level of leverage to be able to ensure that your demands are met is considered like capitalist, like any kind of positive association with like, uh, earning your, uh, getting back more of your, uh, value that you've generated is considered capitalist when it's like fundamentally a socialist principle. But I digress. That's unrelated, uh, to what I was talking about. Um, it's interesting to see, though. Like, it's interesting. It made me happy to see that, like, there are audiences out there, like Rage's audience, who are defending him against, like, some silly shit like that. Anyway. Bro, come on. You want to tap my ass, bro? It's part of the handshake. I'll, I'll do it slower if you want. <laughs> Turning yeah, his back on 2K. This was his, like, gay baiting era. Aiden kicked off what would become his rapper era by first playing GTA with Detroit artist T Grizzly before moving on to even bigger names like Lil Yachty, Lil Uzi Vert. And Soldier Boy. Bro, it's not even a joke. Yeah, someone else has said that gambling ruined his streams. Even his fans agree with that. Yeah, the bag for Aiden. The gambling bag ruined his fucking streams. Now, remember what I said about, like, going to a different platform and getting the bag thrown at you for going to a different platform? There's that. Okay? There's that. And then there is the really just going overboard and selling your audience short and, like, selling them a bunch of dog shit that's also bad content. And it's really interesting to see this because his sussy rapper era was probably peak aided. Okay? That's when he like really started gaining a lot of prominence. He was like 100k view uh viewed streams over and over again. He did a phenomenal job of bringing a lot of fucking like noticeably famous legacy media talent onto this fucking platform, which I think Kai also does a really good job with and and is continuing that uh quite well. Okay? That was great. You do it well too? No, I don't do it well. What are you fucking kidding me? Bro, I had two people that are content creators that are, you know, sizable yesterday. Nobody cares. Nobody watched that shit. That's, that's entirely different. That's entirely different than, like, having fucking little Yachty and, like, 
you know, super famous people on. Like, AOC is the last time, or Grimes and AOC are, like, the two times I've done that. You know what I mean? It's wild to think that Twitch, and really any social media in general, has the capability to connect such well-established celebrities to someone who was just waiting tables in their hometown not even two years prior. It must have been a surreal experience for Aiden, but that didn't mean he wasn't gonna do his best to make an impression. I'm rapping in the streets, whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa. Golden in the streets, whoa. bad at beat whoa. is me. No. <laughs> Silky, fuck me! Fuck me, Silky! <laughs> me! <laughs> so they want to know how big is your dick? Whoa! Yeah, Aiden was a big fan of acting sus around people he just met. Aiden had cultivated an audience of teens, predominantly boys, who were drawn to that specific kind of humor. Aiden himself- I never thought that Aiden Ross's like homophobic sus moments was actually noticeably better than what he would become. Like, think about that. Like, what he ended up evolving or rather devolving into is so bad that like his sus shit is like nothing in comparison. Especially if he like followed that up by being like, I'm confident in my sexuality, which he wasn't. I'm not saying he ever did that. But like, you know what I mean? Like that kind of shit you could actually, uh, you could actually uh, materialize into like a, like a fine, normal thing. You know what I mean? Especially because, like, most of the time, uh, the, the cis gays are not going to be, like, that upset about it anyway. But ultimately, ultimately, he was doing it from the other side regardless. But, and it was like a, lol, look at the gays. You know what I mean? Uh, he was doing that type of shit. And it doesn't matter because it still devolved into something so much worse. Self has always embraced the persona of an obnoxious, aloof kid who just speaks his mind and deals with whatever consequences may follow. Probably because he doesn't think before speaking, he attracts an audience of preteens because that's basically what he is as far as maturity goes. He speaks their language, which is okay when he's playing video games and freestyling with Ski Mask the Slump God, but not as okay when he's platforming people who think the white race is superior. <laughs> okay, so, so yeah. today, tomorrow is a thing called Day of Hate. Uh, it is. Uh, basically, a planned holiday to hate on Jews. Hmm, that's funny that you call me. But we aren't there yet, are we? Aiden's journey thus far has yet to meet such an unfortunate- yeah. no, no, I mean, Jabri perfectly describes it. He, he went from like, ooh, sussy, is he gay? Ooh, he wants to know how big your dick is. Ooh, to like- here is a literal fucking Nazi who likes to eat his boogers. I'm going to have him on the fucking platform to, like, talk about the day of Jew hate or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, the, the oh, yeah, yeah. It's just, like, he literally had his arc that so many of you hopefully look back in your dark history and recognize as, like, a very horrible period, which is the... The PUA pickup artist manosphere to Nazi pipeline. So many motherfuckers in like 2014, 2015 went through that phase on the internet. Okay. So many motherfuckers do that. It's K. He's Jewish. Like, but it, no, it's not okay. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It fade because at this point he was still acting like a moron and beefing with rappers. Aiden once unknowingly sung along to the lyrics of a song that dissed rapper Julio Fulio's deceased brother live on stream. Yo, there's a rapper who you follow. His name is Julio Fulio. You know who he is? Um, yeah, yeah, I know who he is. What's up with him? I played this song that um dissed his brother Bibby, uh, who passed who passed away, and um the chat was kind of like telling me to play that. So I played it. I had not knowing like what was going on. Those are serious people right there. They're serious people? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. If he say you good, he, if he say you good, you good though. Yeah, he's typing to me. Uh, maybe if you could just put an extra word and just let him know like I, I'm not really about that. After apologizing to Julio in a public Instagram live, things were seemingly all good until Aiden was caught singing the song again days later. Let's cut this out. Who I smoke. Say it. No! Hell nah, hell nah, you ain't tripping. Look, Aiden, I'm, f I'm not recording, I'm f***ing live. <laughs> Luckily though, Julio was more than understanding towards Aiden and eventually streamed alongside him in person to prove there was no longer any bad blood. Aiden then himself got dissed by NBA Youngboy after being sent an apparent screenshot of Youngboy liking his girlfriend's Instagram post on a burner account. Aiden then took to Instagram Live to flirt with Young.
it wasn't even right. It turned into like, uh, it wasn't even that. It was just like a fan account or something. Why do I know that? That's nasty that I know that. So stupid of me to know that. I should not know that. Boys X in a public setting. Then there was the time Polo G heard him freestyle. Aiden's gonna be sus the whole time to with Polo G. I'm in the stew with the deuce. We popping up, we two and do. Yeah, I just got done sucking on a gun. I mean, wait. I just beat his meat. Yeah, oh, true. <laughs> what the f yeah, I mean, like, they, yo, the reason why I say this is funny is because, again, contextually speaking, it could be you're making some dudes uncomfortable knowing full well that they have, like, a little bit of, you know, a little bit of uh, uncomfortability with their with their sexuality, okay? It's funny. This is an objectively funny thing to do. Unless you yourself are also, like, uh, not comfortable with your sexuality and and uh, fucking uh, you know doing it to be like haha gay right like like lol gay but that's funny that's a objectively funny thing to do it's like a lot of you motherfuckers get mad at this and then turn around and eat it up when me and rage are talking about how uh you know uh, rage is twerking or some shit like that it is an identical principle It's just that, like, you know that I'm not a homophobic person and you know that Rage is not a homophobic person, so it's, like, safe to make that joke. He's trolling here, but, like, he's not doing it in a bad way. You know what I mean? <laughs> Even though they were said to have put the issue to bed in July 2021, a year later, Polo released a music video pretending to beat a Twitch streamer to a bloody pulp. Aiden then brought Polo back on stream where he looked absolutely terrified as he apologized again. I'm out of pocket, man. I don't know what the f*** was happening to me last year, bro. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 it was just really out of pocket. I'm hereby sorry forever, you know, uh, disrespecting you, doing shit that would, like, be weird, you know? Like, I just... I, Man, how would I put this? I'm sorry, man. You know? And I fuck you, bro. You're gang. You know what I mean? We're gang. And while I wish I could say this was the end of his series of controversies... Also, a lot of this stuff is so awkward. It's like... I've said this before, but my assessment on the situation is that, like... I think oftentimes we forget that, like, rappers are kind of like the music nerd of the bunch. Like, they're not necessarily... They're not usually like super social there are some especially ones that are like incredibly famous at that point like they've they have so much media training that they're like quick but like a lot of rappers are just like shy guys i'm sorry you will never fucking convince me otherwise after watching so many rappers on twitch in a live format in a live setting it 100 they're just like they're meek you know what i mean not everybody's like vince staples who is like hilarious uh and 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 quick on his feet like we always forget and what a lot of shy guys do okay in order to uh make up for that insecurity in a lot of instances is basically like put on a persona that you're like hard you're tough you're a big massive tough guy you know what i mean that's it that's what it is it comes from a place of like insecurity it's like a fake front and that fake front will turn into, uh, you know, serious problems down the fucking line if you have, like, if you follow that up with, like, tough guy antics uh, overall and you have enough security to be able to follow through on that sort of shit and that's where a, a lot of problems arise. But ultimately, I think it literally does stem from, like, people being, uh, people trying to keep up their, like, I'm always serious uh, type demeanor that year in reality things were only heating up i don't know bro like i just feel like you just don't like me i don't know <laughs> right okay we can talk about that summer 2021 is when i first discovered aiden ross not willingly of course but by that june aiden's name was suddenly being mentioned in the same breath as some pretty irresponsible crypto partners there's a yakuza side quest about this law bro there's a yakuza side quest about everything there's a Yakuza side quest about things that you haven't even experienced in the world that you didn't even know existed yet, but it exists already. It's in a Yakuza game. There are Yakuza side quests about your future, okay? One day you will experience a Yakuza side quest and go, what the fuck? I didn't even realize this was going to happen to me. 9-11 Yakuza side quest? Wait, really? I believe it. Porno tape side quest? Bro, there's like a fucking talking to a trans woman about like her... 
uh, insecurities about being trans and like falling in love with a cishet uh, dude. Side quest. From 2009. This game is out of control, dude. Anyway. Yeah. No, literally. Bro. Bro, Yakuza is insane, okay? that That's actually... Oh, so yeah, it's from 2005, not even 2009. Uh, here, here's the Yakuza side quest. Top of the hour ad break, 14 minutes in, okay? There's a Yakuza side quest for that. At the top of the hour, there's a three-minute ad break. If you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe, okay? Serving a top of the hour ad break Yakuza side quest probably exists. I feel like I just had nostalgia. I don't even know why, Okay. There was a cult Yakuza side quest. Dude, it's so sick. Anyway, real baka matai. If you don't subscribe at the top of the hour uh, and avoid the three-minute ad breaks, you can do that by subscribing for $5 or for free or by getting gifted the subs. Sakura Gore! Thank you for the 10 gifted subs. Long 10 people to no longer see. Have you met the naked masturbator for the other side quest? Yes, I have. <sighs> yeah, I meant deja vu, not nostalgia. Here's the three-minute ad break now by the Grim Reaper himself, Coffeezilla, who published an investigation into a now infamous pump and dump scheme and my personal favorite crypto scam of all time, MILF token. If you don't know by now, it came to light that Aiden was paid six figures to shill a crypto project that, from the beginning, never had any legitimacy whatsoever. I mean, it's called a MILF token, for God's sake. You think we can just one day go to the store and pay for a bottle of orange juice with the MILFs? Keep dreaming. Getting naive customers to invest in a shady coin on the off chance it goes to the moon and makes them rich only to rob them blind is not a new practice, but it does become much easier with the help of useful idiots like Aiden Ross, who see it as nothing more than a quick and easy payday. I mean, this is literally how the promotion went. What does it mean, insufficient sons? It says, insufuck, insufuck, it's a lit, lit, lit. Liquidity. Oh, there we go. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, okay. Hold on. Click, click reject. Click reject. Click reject. Tell your chat you're sorry. You, this is your first time. You're, it's you're my first money. time buying MILF. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Wait, what do I do now? Right there. Below. Below. No, no, no. Down below. Below reject. Reject you trans. No, no, no. Yeah. I'm just trying to get a MILF blob doll. This is your dick. <laughs> yeah, you just watched a 20-year-old make $200,000. How does it feel? Chat, by the way, that MILF token shit I did a while back, I already told you guys, don't buy that shit. I got paid a bag to do that shit. Yeah, he's playing stupid. He has to be. Yeah, no shit, dude. Yes, he is. He. Welcome to the real world, okay? A lot of content creators are playing stupid. They play dumber than they actually are. Okay? <laughs> like, I don't give a fuck. How many of you guys actually bought it? <laughs> you saw that after that shit, it went down. So listen, it was not a scam of pumping up nothing. That's the reason it wasn't a scam, guys. Because the price went down, it wasn't a pump and dump. This is where the key lie is, guys. The day of Aiden Ross's promo, the bad promo, bro. Hey, it was a bad promo. They got $19 million in 24-hour volume. After striking this behavior off, skirting responsibility, and doing everything he could to downplay the promotion. Are you playing smarter than you actually are? No, I'm, I'm a fucking real-life dumbass, dude. I think I play it exactly the way I am. A dumb guy. Coffee was quick to call him out for being dishonest about the price of the token going down. While this was true, it didn't change the fact that Aiden's promotion of MILF token in front of 100,000 kids caused the trading volume of the coin to skyrocket to $19 million, which meant holders of MILF were dumping right as Aiden's fans were pumping. You see how that could almost be a crime? Aiden had also become pretty involved in the gambling scene on Twitch, being paid by offshore crypto casinos to broadcast his epic wins with kids all across the globe, tacking a promo code on screen, which no matter how you want to cut it, could very much encourage people to get into gambling themselves without fully realizing the consequences it could bring. I imagine to some fans, seeing the bright colors and loud noises ring out as their favorite influencer experience the euphoria of winning hundreds of thousands of dollars live could be pretty alluring. Massive names like Trainwreck TV, XQC, and Aiden Ross were all making bank from companies like Dualbits, Rubid, and Steak, paying them to neglect neglect whatever concerns critics may have had and showcase their massive wins and losses. Beep, Bonjik, thank you for the five get the In subs. June, Aiden happened to accidentally- Bro, this literally, I think this like caused irreparable harm to like thousands of fucking teenagers, 100%, like uh, getting them to be addicted deeply and undesirably addicted to like gambling.
But also on top of that, it just like kind of ruined content in many ways. It was probably the worst period on Twitch since I was on Twitch, since I was on the platform. And I've seen some fucking wave changes, you know what I mean? Like some really gross shit happen on this fucking platform. Probably the worst one, content-wise. Leaked some terms of the contract with one brand, revealing a potential two million dollar payment being discussed. Just to give you an idea of how integral these partnerships were to anyone morally bankrupt enough to accept them. Oh Having yeah, this your, guy your audience watching you gamble, nothing good is going to come out of that for any of them. There's a reason why you have to be 21 years old to gamble. It's it's a vice. It's it's when you're too young, you can't handle that that stimulation. You can't handle that addiction. It's very 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 dangerous. I didn't I didn't think of that perspective. You know, like people that watch. Because Companies try to get you to do gambling streams. Yes, uh, I I was offered minimum uh, five hundred grand to do uh, to play poker, but that's like not even as bad as crypto gambling shit. So just understand that for like fucking, I've talked about it before. Yeah, the number the numbers that they're giving like especially because like especially because like uh, you know uh, poker is is played against like other people in the same sense. Like there's obviously the probability of it. It's not even that bad. It's not anywhere near as bad as, like, this shit, obviously. Understand? I just didn't do it because, like, across the board, I didn't want to do it. Blood did a huge sponsor stream, uh, poker stream with the casino as a sponsor. Nobody gave a shit. Yeah. <laughs> Ironic, because he didn't actually make anything from that. <laughs> Fucking, they, they just handled the logistics. But that's besides the point. <laughs> but... Me, you know, if they're if I they see me with something crazy, put in hundred dollars, you got a thousand. Why can't I do that? I know what you're saying. Like that's another yeah. side I, I didn't really think about. Aiden demonstrates to me, at least on this stream, that he could at least wrap his mind around the fact that gambling is a bad thing to shove in the faces of kids, but rejected the moral authority to stop doing it because, well, in his words, it's fun. How that does is doing not... gambling online determine if you have a soul or not? Well, because you have no problem peddling gambling to children, and that's a more soulless act than than not smiling. Yeah, because Lud says he's an addict and not to. Do it who cares dude what the fuck do you mean uh that doesn't mean shit what are you talking about so does train wrecks like don't you agree it's fun okay fun for you not for them <laughs> it's a good fun it's fun in general right listen it, it's fun if you make two million dollars a month it's a I'm lot of fun telling, i'm not telling kids to hold their lives on the way Aiden Ross values his own personal entertainment over the responsibility he bears as one of the largest streamers on the internet is pretty much what's gotten him to this weird, sadistic place we've seen him in lately. He asked a viewer to put dog feces on his sleeping girlfriend. How much are we paying? I have to swallow it? I gotta see the and I can give you an amount. Are you a girlfriend? Of course, yeah. When your girlfriend, that's good. But what were the actual events that led up to this? Uh, well, you have to know that by late 2021, Aiden wasn't in the best place mentally. In October, he took to his main YouTube channel to express how generally lost he felt in the grand scheme of Twitch. Seeing a drop in views really didn't help the lack of motivation he had already been feeling. I'm lost. Um, I just have no motivation, um, no idea what to stream. I just need advice and I just need um, help. It's not really the numbers anymore, but the problem is that people make me feel bad about dropping numbers. I think that's a very big problem I have. I talked to him about this uh, back then, like try to tell him like, it doesn't matter. Just keep your head up. Like you're going to fucking, you're, you're obviously captivating like a large audience, not around this time, but like, the timeline's like a little busted on this, but there was a moment before his Tate arc where he was like, he, his viewership was declining and it, it felt like it sucks when you, when you're at the fucking top and then you experience like this drop off and everyone's like constantly shitting on you over it. Um, you know, obviously it's, it's better to have that situation to begin with and then lose it than to never have it at all. But like, you should have realized the only response, the negging law. Yeah, I mean, I treated him like a fucking adult. What made it especially sting was that his own audience was guilting him for the change in numbers. Coupled with the fact that he was feeling stagnant and despondent living in LA, growing tired of the same stale collaborations, Aiden began contemplating quitting streaming for good. He had become so successful that his new fear was becoming complacent. He didn't get as excited to stream like he once did. It now felt forced, like a job he had to clock in and out of. Having no clue where to take himself or his content from here, Aiden Ross was in desperate need 
need of a lifeline. Something or someone who could turn him and his streams around in a positive way and leave a meaningful impact on his life. He needed a reason to keep going. Too bad he found it in the worst person imaginable. How did you know about me? Bro. You just exist in the metaverse, don't you? Your name just floats around, doesn't it? It's just how it kind of works. Aiden opened the floodgates by introducing Twitch to a man named Andrew Tate in July 2022. While Andrew had been making the rounds online leading up to this stream, I didn't notice such a huge jump in his popularity until he began getting propped up by some of the biggest Twitch streamers on the internet. XQC, who at the time was number one on Twitch, debated Andrew in a call with Kai Sinat, who is currently Currently number one on Twitch, all on Aiden's channel in a series of streams that broke records for Aiden's viewership. The chat was moving so fast at times, it was impossible to read anything, creating a golden opportunity for Tate to shill his shameless pyramid scheme in front of Aiden's malleable fan base. While some guests were effective in combating some of Andrew's more contemptible takes, Aiden and Tate seemed to have pretty palpable chemistry right from their very first interaction. Some of the stuff they discussed at the beginning was actually so ridiculous okay technically yeah lebron james uh domino meme uh led to uh andrew tate falling in my fucking lap it's hard not to laugh at the insanity of it all if you were my son i would walk into your bedroom and beat the living fuck out of you what you should only drink water to begin with sparkling as everyone knows i don't like sparkling water it's disgusting you're scared of bubbles no it just it doesn't it doesn't even hydrate you <laughs> I don't have a jet. Does that mean I'm broke? Incredible. Dude, this guy, fuck man. He's so good. He's so brilliant. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> Sounds like it, bro. What are, you, what, are you waiting in lines at the airport? <laughs> <laughs> Brokey. I'm trying to hide from the police. I, I, don't, I don't like making accounts online and stuff. John Law and the government. Wait, hide from you know, the police. I, I, From what? Just in general. But not even 10 minutes into their first conversation, Andrew is already giving Aiden some valuable advice on how he needs to improve his lifestyle. How old are you? 21. Bruv, 21 you should be strong as an ox. At 21, I could split the earth's core. You're out of shape for a 21 year old. I am? You're out of shape, young man. You're 21 years old. You have all the time in the world. Look at his face, bro. He was getting negged so hard. It wasn't just like that his viewership numbers were dropping off, which is actually a really good point that I hadn't even considered. But I think like the final fucking, the final thing came down. Andrew Tate gave him views, okay? Having like, he already had the views, but like collaborating with Andrew Tate was perfect for his dumbass audience. And it brought him back into the fucking stratosphere. But then also on top of that, like, he, you know, the, the, he broke up with his girlfriend and had like, uh, you know, I guess our generation's like uh, PUA uh, king, Andrew Tate, basically neg him into, uh, in his emotionally vulnerable state, neg him into becoming a clone of himself. I bet you're making a bunch of money on the internet. I bet you're loaded as well. You're rich from this shit. Yeah, so you ain't gonna go to fucking work. And you ain't doing any push-ups. Jesus. How do I fix you? when you're so fundamentally broken. I am. And that right there pretty much encapsulates the criminal. Like we used to joke when I first started saying like, oh man, Andrew Tate seemingly is like grooming him. That was like kind of a joke. And then at this point, it's like not a joke at all. Actually, he did. He quite literally groomed him. You know what I mean? <laughs> like <laughs> very successfully so, it's very real levels of dick riding you're about to see there was which just is something weird because like i would joke normally about like grooming a fucking like 23 year old or whatever but like it mean, fucking can happen you know we watched it about andrew tate that aiden found instantly captivating it's like he was practically tripping over himself in his attempts to make a good first impression going out of his way to order sparkling water to his house just so andrew would stay longer maybe this is aiden recognizing what could become one of his biggest streams or maybe he's genuinely interested in what a friendship with andrew tate could do for his general well-being or it's likely a combination of the two andrew! i love you i mean like i love you i mean i 
I love you, man. Like you're, you, you don't. I know you're. You have a good heart. I love him, bro. I love him with all my heart. I missed you. You got bigger and you got stronger. And, and also sexier. a massive. I can just tell you have a good heart. You have good intentions. How could you not smile, XQ? He's great. And you please don't go. That was terrible. Among the tamer discussions of self-improvement and the importance of having discipline, Andrew brings it home with one of his classic bouts of random misogyny. No, but what would that what would that make you if you sit around and only do what you feel like doing? What would that make you? I don't know what. Think about it. A woman. Okay, let me a think. Female, about it. If a female. A beat. Only sit around and I don't uh, a pussy. Close. They have a pussy. Oh, but I. But the know point is. Emotionally led Jesus creatures Christ. are gen females are generally emotionally led when they're happy. They're happy when they're sad They're sad Aiden clearly knows just how insane it is for this guy to be calling women Emotional creatures who just sit around all day and let the men do all the heavy lifting But either for the sake of content or because he's just genuinely slow Aiden chooses to let that statement go and in fact takes it a step further by stating He doesn't think Andrew Tate is a misogynist a lot of people think that you are a misogynistic person. Now, hold on, let me let me finish. I wanna hear it, tell me why I'm misogynistic. No, I don't think you are. I don't think you are, uh, Mr. Tate. I don't, I do not think you are. I do not think you are. So when I say sh like girls can't drive, well, Everyone calls me a misogynist. I think Aiden was both attracted well, to the status of Andrew Tate, having 27 cars and all the women and money he could ever ask for, as well as the added bonus of him being an arrogant edgelord, just like Aiden. And as we covered earlier, Aiden was already feeling lost and directionless just a few months prior to him meeting Tate. The seemingly Man, this story is so perfect for a Jobri video. Like, Jobri is so good at this shit, dude. Just unwinding slowly but surely, just like weaving through these little complicated processes. I mean, shouts out to, shouts out to the man, dude. Great video. The endless slew of advice Andrew was feeding to anyone who would listen felt like just the answer to the problem. For the record, like this type of shit has always uh, struck me as like very transparently insecure. And my goal in life is to basically get others to recognize this level of like over the top hyper masculine behavior as like people trying to correct people trying to overcorrect for an insecurity that they have. And unfortunately, I, I I'll be honest, like, I don't think I've done a good job of, of being able to like get the broader audience of like Andrew Tate heads to recognize that. I think it, it's just not going to happen. I, I have almost given up on that. That's your goal in life. Yes. Because Andrew Tate is one guy, but there are millions of people like Andrew Tate out there in the sense that like there, there, there is right now in your life, there's a guy exactly like Andrew Tate in your immediate vicinity, in your workplace, at school, somewhere, a guy who's like very transparently insecure. And I grew up with guys like that. You know what I mean? I grew up with guys like that. I met guys like that in college. I met guys like that in high school. Uh, there were, you know, people in positions of power that were like that. I worked with guys like that in the, in the real world. You know what I mean? Guys that are just like very insecure, but craft a persona of themselves that is like over the top with mach uh, over the top bravado and machismo and, and guys that are like really fucking hyper masculine in, in circumstances like that, those guys are just like basically fucking lying, but they've been lying so much. They've been lying so much to themselves and to others around them that it's basically become this like massive shield that they put on at all times. The people that are like, I don't have anything happening in the real world in my, in my life that I am going to uh, talk about all the material things that I own, like my cars and all the bitches, all the women around me. I drink sparkling water only. Like, it sucks, but... You know, there's just so many of them, uh, so many people like that out there. And it responds, like a lot of people who are, themselves are very insecure or young, look at the shapes and colors and go, oh, yeah, look at the shiny object. This time, of course, it's Andrew Tate's bald head. But, you know, they look at the cars and they look at the women and they go, uh, oh, my God, this guy's so fucking sick. He's so good. He's so cool. I want to be like him. Look at all of his toys. You have a lot against you, to be honest. Even if you come off as reasonable and forgiving, such as Aiden Ross, either Aiden Ross will take advantage of that and be dishonest towards you, or your haters will sway them away, and your haters have been growing more and more over the years. Yeah, bro, my haters are fucking psychotic. Like, they'll, they'll be in the, 
in the replies of a Stan account posting my dog and going, that's an ugly dog. It's like, how do you have that much hate in your fucking life, brother? You know what I mean? Aiden was faced with. Thanks to Tate, his numbers were back up, his morale was in a more positive place, and he finally had someone in his life who claimed to want to better him. Encouraging him to adopt a healthier lifestyle and being there when Aiden broke up with his girlfriend. You are lost. You're a lost yes, soul. 100% yes. But in reality, it was probably more codependent and transactional than Aiden would care to admit. It's called The War Room. <laughs> you can find out more on CobraTate.com. Listen, oh, I love this. Yeah, room. I saw Cobra this earlier. So that this is so real. Uh, we'll, we'll look at that in a that's, second. That's another reason the war room exists. I'll tell you how you get rich. You go to CobraTape.com and you join Hustlers University. CobraTape.com, Hustlers University. So my my organization, the war room, you go to CobraTape.com and you join Hustlers University. Join the war room. Just don't promote Hustlers University, please. I'll be back. All right, guys, so Hustlers Strap. University. But by the end of that year, you can bet that Aiden was sticking by his original promise to meet Tate in person out in Romania. The two streamed together, bonded over cigars, and Aiden finally got a whiff of what Andrew's bare taint smells like. <sighs> I know I already covered that part, but I- He railed that like a line, brother. I just have not gotten over the fact that he genuinely did that. Aiden made his return to America shortly after, where he shaved his head completely bald in honor of his favorite role model and vowed to make some serious changes. Like, look at the adults in his life. Adults that he pays, by the way, but even then, like, look at their reaction to his behavior where they're like, dude, what the fuck are you doing? In his you know life what I mean? For the sake of bettering his overall mental state. But then the unthinkable happened. And by that, I mean it was entirely thinkable. The Tate brothers getting arrested is the most predictable thing in the world, really. He just got raided and arrested in um, Romania. Listen, it's over some sexual trafficking. Um, I don't over know some sexual I don't, trafficking. I don't, I, don't, I don't know what's going on. Right. Sexual trafficking makes it seem like you were doing trafficking of anything, but in a sexual way. Like you were zesty. You were trafficking in a zesty way. <laughs> yeah, he was doing some sexual trafficking. Like, no, 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 no. They were trafficking cigarettes, but he was doing it like real zesty like. You know what I mean? Aiden went into panic mode when he heard the news. And after publishing an emergency press release to his main YouTube channel, it wouldn't be long before Andrew announced that Aiden Ross was one of the very few people allowed to visit him in Romanian prison. Oh man, I woke up to that and I had just the biggest smile on my face. I'm like, oh my God, this is, this is real, this is crazy. Yeah, I woke up to that and had the biggest smile on my face. What is he talking about? Why, is he, why does he have a big, the biggest smile on his face? Oh, that's right, because the guy who is currently in prison at the time for sex trafficking and grooming and sexually assaulting, allegedly, uh, multiple women said you would be one of the people uh, with, with uh, an allowance to visit him, like to do a conjugal uh, visit in Romania, which, by the way, wasn't even the case because he's not immediate family, so they said no, but... Like, that's what you're happy about, dude. That's crazy. Like, that's what the fuck? How does someone just fall down this, this rabbit hole so fucking hard that they're like, oh, man, I can't wait to do a conjugal visit for the sex trafficker, dude. It's so sick. And the answer to everyone's question, if, if I'm going to basically uh, go see Andrew in jail because he did put me on his visitation list, uh, the answer is uh, this. Andrew Tate. Oh, my God. I'm on my way. We'll see you in Romania, G. It was obvious that being charged with rape, human trafficking, and organized crime wasn't about to put Andrew Tate at odds with his most loyal student. Aiden kicked the meat munching up to a hundred by refusing to accept even the slightest possibility that, hey, maybe this guy does suck after all. After being confronted with genuine evidence of Tate bragging about trafficking women across the world to work for his webcam empire for reduced payment, Aiden's response essentially boiled down to, uh, uh, he got women to fall in love with him, then he flew them out to Romania, okay. and then he had them work like 15 hour shifts, and then he stole money from them while he had them work. Um, the they got, the they got a percentage though, and he put them on, so that's like- Yeah, but he, li he lied about the percentage he gave them, right? Like he's on video talking about he, how he would scam them with their taxes to steal money from them. <laughs> tax is also another important element for controlling your woman. You're not going to pay anybody tax because you're getting paid in Bitcoin. You need to tell your girl that you're paying the tax. Because girls are lazy, and girls are stupid, and girls don't understand how taxes work. And you're like, oh, okay, yeah, we've made this much money, but I'm gonna pay the tax to make sure we don't get in trouble. It allows you to pay her a smaller percent. So I used to pay my girls 30%. So for every $10,000 they made, I'd give them three, and I'd keep seven. They thought they were on 50%, and I said that the disparity is because of taxes. 
If they say, why is it 50-50? I'm the one who knows what he's doing. I'm the one with the knowledge. I'm the da 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 Shut the f up, go online. Print out some tax forms. I used to do this all the time. I used to print out some random tax forms and say, yeah, sign here and sign this. What is it? It's for the tax. You wanna pay the tax or not? Throw them away afterwards, but they, they think something's happening. Something real is happening. Nothing's happening besides me getting rich, bitch. I mean, he's a businessman. In fact, he was practically <laughs> blaming the women for being ungrateful of the money and fame they were given by being effectively forced to work for the Tay brothers against their will. She still gets 30%, still a very, very, and she was making what, zero dollars to the, what, making thousands a month? How could you complain? Yeah, I mean, but it's not like these women needed to be tied up and held at gunpoint for Tate's business model to resemble forced labor. She's not tied with ropes and chains. Hey, like, hey. Wait, do you think that grown women can't get pimped out? It's so stupid. The, the idea that like the only type of coercive labor is by just like whipping someone is so fucking stupid. It blows my goddamn mind, dude. It's just so dumb. Just do like a little bit of reading. Like they, they mention it. They mention it on. You can't just like randomly arrest the motherfucker, bro. They openly stated why they did this. Okay. Coercion doesn't have to directly be at gunpoint. You can, you know, steal someone's passport as a matter of fact. That's a good way to do it. Which from what I understand was one way that he did it. Do you think that grown women can't be victims of trafficking? Brother, everyone. He's so wrong. How do you explain this? Stop dodging and clipping out of context. What is this? Girls hate Andrew Tate is because he's bringing back the strong masculinity. This is surprisingly a bit that didn't really get old for me. You know what I mean? I, I don't know why. Like, it's still funny every now and then when I like randomly click on something and this is what happens. Most girls hate Andrew Tate. I don't know why. I, I like at this point, I would have thought it, the, the bit would have run dry. You know what I mean? I would have been like, oh, this sucks. All right, we got it. Like, nope, still funny. Everyone has their own mind. And every, at the end of the day, everyone, listen, everyone has their own mind. Everyone has their own beliefs. And it's not like he was literally grabbing her, tying her up with a gun to her head. The girl obviously flew out there, know what was going on. Like, there's no secret to it. Yeah, but she obviously didn't know what was going on. If there was no secret, then he would have just said, hey, do you want to come to Romania and work with my trafficking business? But he didn't do that. He said, hey, come to Romania. Let's get married. I love you. And then he got them to work after lying to them about that for sex work. That's sex trafficking. Aiden's walnut-sized brain just isn't capable of comprehending that even now that the Tates have been released from prison and placed on house arrest, that they could possibly still be bad, dangerous people. Remember the whole reason he moved to Romania was for the relaxed legal system. One of the things that makes Andrew Tate so slimy is that he mixes non-controversial and sometimes even decent surface-level takes about procrastinating or motivation or whatever with blatant sexism and inaccurate stereotypes about an entire group of people. He may try to sell the idea that he's a positive role model, but the information he's feeding kids will always be through the lens of a self-admitted human trafficker. Aiden isn't just using Tate's motivational words to get into shape, he's pushing his infatuation with this man to the absolute limit, humanizing him in a way that coaxes otherwise uneducated children into digesting a skewed outlook on women. I think part of this is that kids look for this kind of content, though. Like, kids have an anarchist streak. Um, they always do, so they love this shit. Because, like, ooh, it pisses off the grown-ups. It's a grown-up that's pissing off the other grown-ups, and he's speaking in terms that I can understand, and he's got a lot of toys and a lot of freedom. I would love to have the, that kind of freedom in, the, in those toys. You know what I mean? That's, that sounds great. Kids equals boys. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Like, that's that's how that's how young boys are. I was one. I know, you know, fucking 500 years ago at this point. But I know they love this, like, contrarian shit that is supposed to be, like, offending uh, the sensibilities of civilized society that they look at with disdain to begin with because they consider it to be, like, an oppressive, unjustifiable hierarchy women and masculinity. Aiden refuses to recognize the obvious pitfalls of Andrew Tate, stupidly making him out to be some chill guy who occasionally says something out of pocket as a joke. But this approach only perpetuates the very hatred Aiden pretends to stand against. And as of now, he's either too dense or willfully ignorant to see it. Aiden Ross, 
This is what you've done to your fans. Oh, say hi, Aiden Ross. Let's go, Boston. Say hi, Aiden Ross. Hi, Aiden Ross. W meds. Um, I support Aiden. But who cares about that? He likes me, bro. He likes me. The validation this guy desperately craves is sad. His incessant need for attention bleeds into his ideology and clouds his moral compass to the point where I can no longer tell what he believes. One minute he's saying he isn't political, the next he's excitedly throwing support behind Donald Trump. One second he's preaching against hate, the next he's platforming neo-Nazis. It became pretty evident during this stream in particular with Destiny that Aiden Ross has absolutely no goddamn clue what he's talking about with politics you know damn well trump is better than Biden. <laughs> this is what it took for you <laughs> jambri to be like wow he's so dumb <laughs> Biden, bro. he did amazing i'll explain it he pardoned asap rocky he pardoned kodak he he, he did a lot of cool fun shit, bro he did so much cool fun shit. he made like he made like the world like just fun and entertaining you know but like Biden, yeah, Biden's like, not entertaining. Yeah. Biden has a shit raise the infl inflation. And and he like barely can formulate a, a sentence. Okay. Employment rate was at an all time high when Donnie was in office. I mean, employment rates have been pretty crazy for the past like year in the United States now too, right? No. Do you even know what like the unemployment rate is? <laughs> what it should be? No, I don't, I don't. But I know that like based off of my information that I've heard and seen that, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know how to argue with based on information you feel like you've heard and you've seen. Yet, yeah, he's remained persistent in regurgitating culture war nonsense because it stirs the exact kind of negative attention he thrives off. And so the dumb. grand irony is that it works. I mean, I'm here talking about it right now. Over 70 million impressions on a single tweet is a mind blowing metric. Even he admits. Yeah. I mean, that's how easy it is, dude, to turn the fucking faucet. That's the parachute cord. You rip that shit. You go, you know what? I'm sick and tired of fucking lying. Okay, I'm done. I've lied my whole life. I lied my whole career. I think all this gay shit sucks. Blah, 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 blah. You do that. Boom, dude. You will get fucking launched, especially if you toe the line, especially if you toe the line and you don't, you're not stupid enough to do the Aiden Ross shit. You will literally be celebrated so much. You know what I mean? It's, it's, so that's why I get so mad whenever the, the absolute dumbest people on the fucking internet. Whenever I see an account with like a, like a trans flag and like, you know, this is my neurodivergence. And then they're like, I fucking hate Hassan. He's so fucking cringe. He's so fake. I'm like, Hello? He's such a grifter. It's like, what are you saying? Like, what, what the fuck are you? People want to kill you, idiot. They want to kill you. You think I'm your enemy? You're such a fucking dumbass. It blows my mind how fucking stupid some of you dumb motherfuckers can be on the left. It, it is truly mind-boggling. So stupid. They're just distracted by you being rich or something? No, they're distracted by the 17 million fake controversies that have happened that have permanently tarnished my reputation for these fucking donkeys to like recognize okay as anything but a mere distraction and a way to tarnish the reputation of like a, a you know popular left-wing figure that's it that's literally it you can do this to any single person they don't have to do anything bad ever okay the the more you like the more you uh, are, are, I don't fucking know. The more, the more you're in the spotlight as like a bad guy, that's it. That's a, the more you will become a bad guy in the eyes of many. That's it. Bro, can I tell you guys how crazy that is? There were 73 million views on this tweet. Like, bro, like that, that is really fucking crazy. But he's not saying any of this stuff because. Oh, wow. That's a really good fucking Turkish saying. Çamurat yapışmazsa izi kalır. Means sling dirt. Even if it doesn't stick, there will still be a mark left on it. And that's true. And I'm, gonna fu I'm under a mountain of dirt at this point. I'm fucking covered in it. I'm caked in it. That's a great fucking take, man. Good shit. When in trouble, start flaming non-straights. Easy escape. Yeah, literally. Dude, it is a parachute cord to just be like, fuck trans people. You say that shit, dude, boom. All, all, everyone who's extremely online. In the real world, most people just have apathy, so it doesn't really matter to them. But in the online sphere, it is... It, it, it's great. You immediately get hug boxed by like every fucking psychotic, deranged, transphobic, sad motherfucker 
that that is like excited at the prospect. They're salivating at the fucking prospect of being like, <gasps> yeah, we got another one, boys. Because of an underlying ideology he cares about. Give me three reasons why Trump is better than Biden. I'm not saying you're wrong. I just want to know if you actually if you're actually talking and you're not just a bot. Bot okay. repeating. First of, all, first of all, what happened with abortion is is ridiculous. You should not be able to tell a woman what to do with her body. That's first of all. That's a woman's wait, body. Wait, you think? Wait, you think? You oh, think? Oh, you're so oh, brain dead. Oh, oh, you're so brain dead. I love wait, this. You this think is Biden one of my was the one time. that wanted abortion to be? That's that's what you think? That's just, like that's, that's how that works. He's a president. He can, you know what I'm saying? He can fucking not ban it. What do you mean? All right, bro. As it's hard to tell whether or not he holds any strong political convictions one way or the other, the problem is that he's involving himself in a world he just doesn't understand. Such reactionary talking points have been around for years, but only sound... It's all unfolding. You know how many genders there are, and you old man can't get pregnant. You only post bad things about certain people. But when people, you're afraid... Uh, you're too afraid to come after, mess up, you don't post them. You're a fake woke far left. Post all controversy, not just people you don't like. That is, uh, th this is like the, the, <sighs> the, the hilarious like train wreck style take, which is like, oh, wow, you guys care about crypto casinos. Why don't you care about all other bad things as well? <laughs> Fucking got them. And it's like, it's, it's a thing that you could uh, eviscerate. It's like an argument that you could eviscerate if you thought about it more than three and a half seconds, but like most people don't even do that. So they're like, yeah, okay, got it. Edgy to Aiden because of this criminally shallow understanding of politics. He seems to think that regurgitating something you'd hear out of your 80 year old senile grandfather is somehow epic and based. What all he's doing is reinforcing the narrow, outdated framework the Western society is quite literally built upon. It's not new wave or edgy to say something that people have been saying since the dawn of time. Being on the opposite side of progress is the least edgy thing you can do. It's just annoying, honestly. So, all you guys that get to pick your pronouns, my pronouns is slash them. I'm going to call you a, a, either a guy or a girl. I don't know if you've ever met a non-binary person, but they do exist. So maybe you get with the fucking times. I don't know. He's in way too over. You know what's funny? A thing I noticed is that like I was interacting with Aiden a lot when he had more mainstream uh, appeal. And I noticed that he was going down this like bad trajectory. So the first half of the video is mostly clips of me and him talking or me and Ethan talking with him. And then the second half of the video is just only Destiny talking to Aiden because once he got fucking deplatformed off of everything, I just had no opportunity to talk to him at all and can't even fucking talk to him at that point. So then it's just like, oh, then it's just him debating him, which is, I mean, he doesn't, I mean, it's easy. Anyone could do that, but Destiny's also a good debater regardless of my differences in opinion and, and overall uh, distaste for him as a human being, um, you know. He, he he's short work very very short work to make of aiden and he's doing a great job of over it. his head and it doesn't just stop and end with a tweet about there being two genders when he had repeatedly involved himself with self-described white nationalist nick fuentes a simp for fascism who's advocated for a white ethno state in between his efforts to assist kanye west's 2024 campaign for president which i know is kind of a loaded sentence but as aiden inched closer to an interview with kanye around the time he was making headlines for his anti-semitic comments aiden called off the stream after an argument between the two on a private phone call devolved into Kanye telling Aiden quote you Jews aren't going to tell, tell me what I can and can't say and yeah and um no way. this is when I thought this is when I thought it was gonna be like uh maybe he wasn't gonna go down this like weird pipeline the timeline is a bit off on this but like when he was talking about fucking uh, when he was talking about Kanye West and like not having this conversation with him, he was just doing that to cover his own ass, but it also felt like he understood the severity of the situation. Meanwhile, he fucking once kicked through the bag at him, he has done so much worse in like platforming way worse people for so much less. Like very sad state of affairs. Yeah. And um, you know, you Jews aren't and you know, what we what I can and can't say, and uh, you know, like we cool, and I was like I was like, yeah, yeah, we cool. Like, you know what I mean? Like, just, just, he's like, I don't want you to be my enemy. And, and then, yeah, that was it. And then I was like, all right. And then he was like, love, brother. I haven't heard from him since. And, you know, we haven't talked since. Um, so people think I got silence from Twitch. People think I got silence from, you know, the higher ups. No, 
that was that was the reason why. Seeing Aiden display somewhat of a backbone here would have been more refreshing and admirable if he hadn't continued to bring Nick Fuentes on stream to discuss pressing matters like, what do you mean Jews are doing the work of Satan? What does that even mean? Can you please, you know, elaborate? A lot of hate crimes are hoaxes. You remember when Ye put the uh, swastika on his Twitter? The message was about reconciliation. If you could reconcile Jews and Nazis, you could bring the whole world together. So his his whole idea was about... But a lot of what Nick has spewed in front of Aiden's audience goes without being challenged. As by the end of this stream, Aiden is still asking if there's anything he can do to help with Kanye's campaign. If you Yeah, here's the thing, okay? Not everyone has the capacity to deal with these people. And I would urge most people to not even deal with them, if especially if they do not have a prominent audience. If you have a big-ass audience, don't deal with these motherfuckers at all. You know what I mean? Don't. Just don't. Even if you're very, even if you're the best, most prolific fucking debater, don't deal with them. Don't platform them. Don't hang out with them. Don't go get fucking dinner with them. Okay? What the fuck is this shit? What are we? Is this a game? Like, you just don't give a fuck? Like, this is... The, the ideology that they're espousing, the ideology that they're, that they're fucking promoting is quite literally just deadly to so many people. You know what I mean? Don't, don't do that. Don't fucking do that. You know what I mean? And it's super easy. Like, there are plenty of people with, like, twisted, distorted, idiotic fucking ideas that you can actively platform that are going to be infinitely less damaging than, like, a spokesperson for white supremacy. Right? Even if you are the best at uh, dunking on white supremacists, unless they reach a certain level of prominence and they're actually hitting like mainstream avenues and genuinely developing an audience and it's becoming a threatening issue, there is no reason to debate them. All Aiden is doing here is literally platforming them. Like, that's all you're doing. You and Yay, you know, I know you guys are still thinking about running for the 24. Do you guys want me a part of the team, man? I'll join. I think he's totally open to that. Like, what happened to not spreading hate, man? Where did that go? I can't yeah. allow any type of hate on my platform. At the end of the day, man, I don't want to. It's just, it's, it's just, it's spreading hate. It's all about spreading love now, man. I, I want to spread love and make sure everyone's, you know, straight. Aiden also at one point tries to convince Fuentes to accept other religions, which will never happen, considering he is not pro-freedom of expression. In fact, he vows to suppress the voices of his enemies. See, just like he was to Tate, Aiden yeah. Ross is nothing but a megaphone for someone like Nick Fuentes to shout his dangerous views into. As opposed to staying relegated to the darkest cesspits of the internet, Aiden has made sure Fuentes the funniest part about it is that like so many kids that want to like look for edgy content that's like different that'll really piss off your parents unironically go down this pipeline where they are what like you just skipped your liberal mom and became your fucking racist grandfather I guess like it's not counterculture it's not unique it's not different than anything other people have said before. And the guy that you are like shaping your worldview off of is like the biggest fucking loser like hilariously. The biggest fucking loser, like a booger eating donkey, okay, who's defending the status quo and, and aggressively so. Gets as much attention as he can on his own stream in front of tens, if not hundreds of thousands of teens who are just a couple Google searches away from falling deep into a rabbit hole of poisonous ideology and unabashed lies. But none of this was going on at Twitch. No, this match made in hell could only have been made possible by Kick. See, Aiden had yeah. received his eighth and final ban from the platform on February 25th, 2023, shortly after making the move to a brand new Twitch alternative named Kick just a few weeks prior. Kick was pretty attractive to Aiden for a few reasons. The main, of course, being a much more relaxed TOS. Yeah, nudity, gambling, blatant, racism. No top of the hour ad breaks, which come at the top of every hour because there's no fucking advertisers on the Nazi platform, you know what I mean? Hey, that's right. Um, Aiden would be okay, here is the three minute ad break now. That is right on the fucking dot. Right at 2 p.m., baby. 2 p.m. Pacific. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Here's the three minute ad break now given not just free reign to speak his mind and be as obnoxiously offensive as he'd ever been he would wait what the fuck is that was that free reign to speak his mind and be as oh that's austin ox aiden i was like what the fuck 
Aiden, if I call a girl a dishwasher, right? That's not me being sexist. You know what sexism is? It means I don't like people based on their sex, which are, which there are two of them. Train. Well, that's listen. See, this is what I mean. Sometimes you dig yourself into a goddamn hole as obnoxiously offensive as he'd ever been, he was offered the biggest streaming deal of all time. Kick is funded by the massive gambling company Stake, which has endless pools of money to shill out to their creators, evidently. Kick also famously gives their streamers 95% of their ad revenue, as opposed to the admittedly awful 50-50 revenue split you could get over on Twitch. When you couple all of that together, there really was no reason in Aiden's mind to stay over there. So he made an announcement and brought 200 166,000 people over to what I can only describe as the Twitch equivalent to 4chan. But being given such intense freedom out of no- Which, by the way, like, 4chan exists on Twitch already. You know what I mean? It's more like 8chan, I would say. Because, like, 4chan is, like, pretty Twitch. Twitch culture and 4chan uh, mix with one another. That's why there's a lot of fucking um, relentless haters on here that love uh, cyber-stalking me for- because they think one day everyone, all the normal people will also see me as a lol cow. Even though if you have a fucking lol cow, uh, if you know what a lol cow is, you're already so permanently brain broken that like average human beings look at you like you're a fucking psychotic weirdo and a possible school shooter. Um, you know, that's, it's not going to happen for that reason. But uh, that's the 4chan mentality. Uh, Kick would be the 8chan mentality that, where they recognize that they're like horrific demons that uh, the average human being uh, frowns upon. Nowhere meant he was going to test the boundaries of what he could and couldn't get away with. And that meant crossing some lines that have now shaped his entire reputation. Have you seen Aiden on kick? Yeah, him and Train stream the entire- I feel that, like it's less 4chan now, maybe I'm clueless. No, because you only, ex you probably go here and like uh, adjacent streamer communities that are overall very positive and very lib or, uh, you know, leftist. You're like, wow, I only watch Hassan, Carter, Frogan, Mike from Pennsylvania, offline TV, and it's just so nice. It's like, yeah, no shit, dude. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's it's very different. I'll give you a great example. Someone just said new frogs, right? So that terminology, by the time I had gotten on the fucking platform, was already such a permanent part of it that I didn't even know where it originated from, and I still use it, right? New frogs. New frogs is a substitute for new F-words, okay? The gay one, the gay F-word, which is, like, it's a substitute for the slur because you couldn't say the slur anymore openly, so they changed it to new frogs, right? But... But ultimately, once it evolves to a, uh, once it evolves in that direction, and people that are utilizing it don't even know what it means, that people that normally wouldn't ever use that term, uh, utilizing it, it just takes a life of its own. It's like Pepe the Frog, you know what I mean? Originally created by, originally created by, uh, you know, a, a nice dude, uh, then uh, adopted by the fucking groper weirdos on 4chan. That then ultimately turned back around and became like a positive figure once again. Entire Super Bowl on Kick. Did Kick have like a license for it? First stream on Kick, by the way, to 67,000 viewers. If you thought Aiden couldn't possibly get any dumber than breaking copyright law to stream the Super Bowl in its entirety on Kick, think again. Because one of the biggest scandals he's had since joining the site involves the time he streamed the front page of Pornhub to an audience of God knows how many minors. What do y'all want to watch on Pornhub, bro? What do y'all want to watch, bro? I don't support porn. Like, I don't, I don't support this shit. <laughs> the fuck do y'all want to watch on here, bro? I don't support this shit. I don't condone it. I don't support it. Come here real quick. There's no fucking way. What? You're just having this on stream. Is that bad? What? Chat, do y'all still beat your meat, yes or no? Wait, how old are you guys in the chat, bro? 11, 12. Jesus. I didn't know that. It doesn't even make sense why he would do this. After being so critical of hot tub streamers. I think hot tub streaming should be banned from Twitch. You're, you know, it's, 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 it's soft porn. It's in the same category as gambling, right? Because it's, it's promoting poison. Uh, you know what I'm saying, in the brain. It, it's just a fact, in my opinion. Profiting off women's cleavage over on his main channel while decrying how much he hates porn. You get a little hard? No. Cow. 
feel it. But at least Aiden sobered up and apologized for the hypocrisy after the fact, only to start paying people to do sadistic things to themselves and family members on camera in front of tens of thousands and a panel of Aiden and his friends, which included the creator by the name of Neon, who among such awesome moments like being outwardly racist to a group of black kids on Omegle, once faked his own death and lied about having brain cancer for attention. In case you wanted to know the kind of crowd Aiden associates with these days. Listen, you're gonna take out Pat and say, wake up! And go smack, 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 okay? <laughs> what did you say? Spit on her, bro. Fuck it. Go back in the room! Katie, stop, stop, stop! In one stream, Aiden pays a viewer to splash what looks like some strange yellowish liquid on their sleeping sister before hitting the wall with a baseball bat to wake her up. In another, Aiden can be seen paying a viewer $25,000 to shave his head bald and pepper spray his eyes, while another dare got one of his fans fired from their job. Another fan was dared to steal and smash the phone of his sister on camera, but was paid less since he didn't show enough dedication. I'm gonna still give you five, and just all you have to do is just Get her a new phone and that, and get her a new TV, and then you get to keep the rest. One guy was asked by Aiden to pee on his brother, and when he learned his brother was a Hassan fan, he offered a 20k payout to slit his throat. In Minecraft, of course. Because he doesn't know what, like, live streaming is? Yeah. No, he knows what that is, but he doesn't know who you are. He watches f***ing Lasan. Oh my god, this is even him more pissed at Look at his chest to the now, I love it. I know. Just normal activities, bro. Fuck it, he watches Lasan, dog. That's why it's like kind of funny. I mean, I love this video. It's so fucking stupid. Um, but it, it, it's pretty funny when you're like a whole ass grown ass adult going, oh, Lasan, bro, you are literally like 38 years old. The fuck's wrong with you? Like, that's the kid. That's the kid that says Lasan. I get it. Like, you're a dork. You know what I mean? You're never going to get pussy. You're going to be a sad, pathetic fucking loser, probably, unless you change your mind and, you know, actually become, like, a normal human being. Um, however, if you're, like, already, like, a 38-year-old divorced dad saying Lazan, it's, like, it's over for you, dude. It's over. You've, you've done. You, you've done everything you could. You got to a point where... You fucking got to a point in your life where, like, you're so pathetic. You, you're, like, repeating shit that 14-year-olds say. It's done. It's over. You're done. You're done goofed. Just fucking reset. Hey, yes! Oh. Yes! Uh, yes. Uh, no, no, listen, he's a stomping? Bro, if you slit his throat, I think I'll give you 20K. No. <laughs> I'm, kidding. I'm, kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, not Aiden. I'm talking about Aiden is, like, 20... 223 I don't fucking know how old he is but uh, I'm talking about like Andrew Tate who's like 37 years old I'm talking about like the 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 fucking what is the fucking pocket the FNF fresh and fresh and fat podcast like the the PUA guys you know what I mean like those guys are that's crazy you're like an old ass man dude what the fuck hey, I'm kidding I'm kidding yeah, yeah. instead the fan settled on peeing in a cup but failed to get his brother to come to the camera not going through with it so he didn't get the money see you'd think someone of Aiden's financial aptitude who will never have to work another day in his life could stick to just giving away money for free without the unhinged need to make people smear bodily fluids on each other for his own personal entertainment remember to always spread positivity right guys peace and love and dog feces. But Aiden sure has made it difficult for people to talk about his content at all lately. What with him issuing false copyright claims against a slew of YouTubers who just used clips from his streams and provided commentary under the protection of fair use. If attempting to steal a life-changing payout of over $8,000 to one creator by the name of Internet Anarchist wasn't bad enough, here he is laughing about it on stream. W. Chat, by the way, this is um Hassan's head moderator, chat. Put a W in the chat, we stole $8,000 from him. W. He needed that. Yes! Yes! <laughs> yes! W, yes! <laughs> yes? Yeah, same guy who streamed the Super Bowl to 100,000 people, by the way. Also, not sure why he thinks this is Hassan Piker's head moderator. You really think this guy has a head moderator? Mmm, eat her ass! Eat her ass! What is happening? Doggies. But Aiden's too busy barking like a seal at the idea. Yo, chill. Okay, but like true. But also, what the fuck? Yo, why did you? <laughs> why did you fucking do that to me?
God damn it. Just rolled, dude. Yeah, that wasn't me. That was Sean Biker, a different guy. Why did you say that? I was making fun of someone, probably. I don't, I don't even remember. It was so long ago, but I think it was like... I, I think it was literally about... Uh, uh, someone else's stream that I was watching or some shit. I don't fucking remember. What was it? Was it Tim the Tap Man? Or this guy has a head moderator. Mm, eat her ass! Eat her ass! Mm, poggies! But Aiden's too busy barking like a seal at the idea of robbing one of his enemies of a very decent pay. You were making fun of chat being weird about you having guests over? I was there? Yeah. Probably. Day ...to care. His dedicated fans will be there to support him even if he is taking advantage of YouTube's broken copyright system and issuing illegal DMCA takedowns of those who barely even criticize him. The video by Internet Anarchist that Aiden was so excited to claim contains clips of his streams but also includes abundant analysis that undoubtedly falls under the four pillars of fair use. Plus, Aiden hasn't been the most subtle at hiding his intent. Listen. New editor, I'm not gonna lie, if I don't fuck with them, do it. If I fuck with the YouTubers you're doing it to, don't do it. Like, this guy's an actual dick sucker, bro, so he deserves to get copyrighted. He's a dick sucker. He knows it's wrong, and he doesn't care. This guy's encouraging his editor to abuse the copyright system if it's a person he doesn't like. It's pretty funny. That he's just, like, so bad at doing fucked up shit. That, like, he gets himself in trouble. Like, he could have just, like, copy-striked it and not said any of that shit, which probably would not have gotten that much attention. I wouldn't have seen it on the Internet Anarchist stuff. All he had to do was deny it. But, like, he is... Uh, yeah, Chatter, you are correct. He is not dissimilar to Andrew Tate in that sense, where he can't stop himself from openly admitting to wrongdoing, misconduct, and sometimes crimes. Because what he's doing there, when he says he did a false copy strike for malicious purpose, is literally a crime. One that has like a super minor uh, offense for someone like Aiden Ross, who gets you know hundreds of millions of dollars, I would assume, over the course of his long uh, streaming career. It's only $2,500 uh, in, in, uh, in fines. But, like, it is literally something that is, like, is a crime. <laughs> you're self-snitching. You're self-reporting that you're doing this uh, in a way that, you know, will get you in legal trouble. Because they hurt his feelings. Um, if that isn't the weakest, soyest shit you've ever seen, it, I don't know what is. It's also very funny timing that Aiden dropped the claim on one video hours after this post began making the rounds on Twitter. A tweet from the act man almost hinting at some kind of litigation in the class action variety, I wonder. Who am I to speculate, right? Now, while I am hopeful Aiden comes around on this and releases all the other claims, it doesn't mean he will. But at this point, enough people have been affected that I wouldn't completely discount the idea that it does go to court, if in which he may need to take on a couple more gambling sponsors to cover all those legal fees. If I painted my nails, did my makeup, and basically never told the guys to get the gym and do, and do push ups, and, and, I, and I had blue hair, I, I, I would be on Twitch right now. Facts or cap, be honest. It's facts. If I basically had a different approach and I wasn't looking as a threat, and I wasn't so controversial, <laughs> Controversial. Yeah. All right, really? You gotta crack me? Really, dude? Aiden loves to play up his stupidity, but it's important not to downplay the damage he inflicts regardless of his ignorance. From stealing money from people he doesn't like, to drooling over a bald human trafficker, hosting racist and sadistic torture streams, and joking about killing trans and non-binary people, Aiden's kind of done it all. Bro, I'm telling you guys, bro, this past month has been a really bad month for me, bro. My mental's been super fun. Super, super, super fucked, bro. The controversial era is over with, bro. It's done. I'm done with the controversial era, bro.
It's done. And while he insists his controversial days are all behind him, I have a hard time taking his word at face value, considering this was all before he abused the copyright system and laughed about robbing someone. He hasn't really proven to be the most reliable, trustworthy guy over the years, I'm sorry to say. I can't allow any type of hate on my platform. It's just, it's all about spreading love now, man. I, I want to spread love. If his goal is to build a community on love and acceptance, he's done a pretty shit job at it so far. Sadism, torture, and intolerance have plagued his stream since the day he met his role model. And I think if he ever does want to change, he'll need to do some serious reevaluating. His platform is just too massive for him to continue being this ignorant and irresponsible with it. Did you ever meet him IRL? I did, which was documented on the Soda Poppin stream. And Aiden Ross did the same thing that he did to me. Uh, or that I did, sorry, that he copy me for by slapping his own fucking socials on it. But yeah, we've met a bunch of times. Introducing countless young fans to dangerous ideals does way more damage than I think Aiden realizes. He needs to genuinely grow up and move on from and this corrosive to, yeah. phase of his life before things manage to get even worse. Otherwise, I'm afraid the prospect of Aiden Ross becoming just another Sneeko could be cemented as his permanent legacy. That and watching his own sister's OnlyFans. Donated one dollar. Hey Aiden, I need your advice. My sister catfished me and I jacked off to her nudes. I feel terrible. What should I do? That's honestly happened probably to all of us. All you gotta do um, is just... You've jerked off to your sister's nudes? Hold on, one second, yes. Just realize that... Keep on keep on yeah. You guys didn't know that? That's the, that's the icon for a, a generation right there.